Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a wonderful day. So today's video, I haven't done actually one of these videos in quite a while. I remember doing them last year quite a bit. I remember doing them last year quite a bit. Um, They were on uh, like me answering the question, who will see a snowy month, you know, January, February. Well, I'll be trying to answer this time, who will see a snowy February 2019 and... um. It's just let's just jump right into this. So the first slide I have up is you considering. I'm trying to, uh, I'm just trying to convince you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's a great thing you can do. It uh, supports my channel. It makes it grow. Makes my video come out to more people, and you can do that. Also, if you'd like to support my channel in an even greater way, you could do that by becoming a patron. I'll link a link the uh, the, the, the website down below, and the sign up is really quick and simple. You could consider doing that if you want to support it more directly, the channel. So thank you for doing that. So the first thing I want to look at is the teleconnections. And the teleconnections, I haven't done a, haven't done a video on this in a, quite a long time. Due to the partial government shutdown, uh, the I couldn't really access these graphs. I could have still, you know, accessed the raw teleconnections off this other website, but it just wasn't as nice to look at. And I never, never really bothered making a video, but now since the partial government shutdown's over, can make this happen. And you can see that the WPO uh, right now being negative, and it's going to go positive. I'll explain what all this means in a minute. And uh, the EPO, it's going to go a little bit positive for a brief warm-up, during that brief warm-up, and go negative later on. And this is what a WPO looks like positive and this is what we're expecting to do for much of the month you could see from the second all the way through the 12th doesn't go out much further but uh, for a good chunk of the month this is what made things look like the cold reserve to the north and west and then a little bit warmer across the east not necessarily warm just around average maybe a little bit below average maybe a little bit above they're favoring here a little bit above but the west definitely being cooler and that does look likely at this point because we are looking at some fairly large big storms coming into the west right now that will bring um, the trough back down into the U.S. to allow those storms to occur. And that will lower the temperatures as these storms typically bring in cool temperatures with them. And so the EPO, yeah, so the EPO is going to be um, going a little bit positive and then negative. So I just did the negative EPO. This is what a negative EPO does because during the positive phase, um, that's when we'll have the warm up, and the negative one looks like this. So a positive is basically warmer, and a negative is when it's cooler across the east. So we could be looking for this across the um, same time frame as the WPO is showing this. So they're not completely agreeing, but basically we're getting a sense that in the northwestern part of the country, I think it will be fairly chilly. Um, while the southeast, there's a greater amount of unconfidence and uncertainty because things could be, you know, warmer, cooler, or just average. And we'll just have to figure that out throughout the video and look at some other things. So let's look at two other teleconnection indices, which is the PNA and the NAO. So the PNA is the Pacific uh, North Atlantic Oscillation. And I think that's exactly what it is. I don't know exactly word for word, but right now it's supposed to be going into the negatives. Right now it's a little bit positive as I'm recording this video, 30th. It's positive, very slightly positive. I mean, almost nothing, just right now neutral. And uh, it's going to dip down way into the negatives around the time of the warm up and then lift up back into the positive. So um, I did, I think this is what I did for the, I did the positive because I just didn't, I just discounted this warm up because. Uh, this will basically, we already know what's going to happen when, uh, th through this time frame, through about the 2nd of February through the 8th, 6th, there will be a big warm up in the eastern, southeastern part of the country, and many areas that are experiencing Arctic temperatures will be experiencing warmer temperatures throughout the period. So it's more, we're more interested in what's going to happen afterwards. Is it going to become back snowier? It's going to come back to cooler conditions. And at this point, it seems like we will come back into or go back into some cooler conditions. I don't think, I highly doubt it will be as cold as what we're experiencing now across the Midwest, but still some below average temperatures and it looks fairly snowy, especially for the central uh, U.S. So uh, going, you can see it's gonna going to be positive and an NAL basically neutral, not doing much. I still put it as negative though. I'm going into the later part of February on the map to show you. So this is what the PNA looks like when it's uh when it's positive, and we could be seeing that. But according to the other two things, 
it was supposed to be cooler in the Northwest, so you can see the teleconnections aren't that clear. There, there's a mixed feeling about them. The NAO negative looks something like this, and that's what will be very, very minor, minorly negative into the coming days after around the 6th or 8th of February. So I wouldn't take this too much into uh, consideration, considering that the NAO will be very minimally negative. So besides these teleconnections, since these aren't the you know one hundred percent accurate, and even if they are accurate, they sometimes disagree with each other. One one indice shows another result from a different one, and that's what we're seeing right now. Look at that. This one's showing what this will look like. This is different. So there's a little bit of confusion going on. Let's go on to the AO, which is another indice. So the AO right now, you can see it just dipped down into way into the negatives. And that is because we are experiencing an Arctic blast. When it goes down into the negatives, we tend to see colder air into the eastern, northern, central United States. And when it's positive, we could be seeing much warmer conditions across the country. But don't be fooled by this. This is only one model out of a whole string of models. There's probably... 20 or 30 models right here and there's only one that's going that high up and at this point i would say we're definitely going to moderate with this warm-up and this is what it goes and then this is where the warm-up's happening right here but then right through here some models are showing way way way, way up to the positive some are showing way down into the negatives but generally we're experiencing a slightly n negative pattern uh, all of these canceled out all of these you know, equaled out, kind of averaged out, it turns out into a slightly negative um, indice, not necessarily positive just because a couple of models and not necessarily so negative as this one is showing. That would be that would be insane. So slightly negative, and this is what a slightly negative looks like, similar to the NAO. So again, another mixed feeling, not really helping us at all, as I showed you the previous ones showing. Some of them were showing warmer conditions for the southeast, now they're showing cooler. So in general, I would say, based off these just these teleconnections and i would say that the cold air will most likely start up in the northwest throughout the beginning part of february while the southeast and central part of the country is very warm and it will shift down into the central u.s and southeastern u.s again i don't think it will be as cold as this cold air mass we have right now going on but it will still be fairly chilly so let's quickly look at this climate prediction center cpc and what they have to say about their one month outlook nigger and if we look at this, we see uh, not not too much confidence, and that's uh, always a thing because if they had too much confidence, then that you know, that's just a little bit a little bit alarming. But um, these colors aren't how cold it's going to be. That's how they're that's how confident they are going to be, or they are. So forty percent confidence in this darkest blue of being below average, thirty and thirty three percent and through forty percent of being um, confident in this area being below average. Equal chances for the white and then above average in the west. And this was made 17th of January, so this is quite a while ago. So I think at this point they could have updated it and um, changed it. But I checked yesterday, and this is what they had, so they didn't update it. But I think now their status would have been would be different if they did update it. In terms of precipitation, this is one thing I really don't agree with. Uh, they're showing much above below average for California. That's okay, but the part I don't believe with or take is this part right here. I think it'll actually be very above average for this part of the country. There'll be quite a bit of snow and I just don't see this happening. And the reason that, and the, you know, the, why they have this so below average, I don't know, but because they have this so below average, I'm not buying completely that these blue temperatures are completely in the right place or these warm temperatures are in the right place either. They're so off on a precip. And I know they'll be off because even some of the shorter to medium long range models um, are showing above average precip. And this was made 17th of January. So remember, this was almost half a month ago. And we move on. And these are basically, oh, sorry about that. These are basically ensembles of the GFS. And this is basically like five-day averages. So say this is about the 3rd through the 7th of February. I'm, I'm making these days up. I'm not, I'm not sure what the exact dates are. But let's say this one's like the 3rd through the 7th. This one's a 4th through the 8th. This one's a 5th through the 9th. So it goes up by one day, but it's an average of five days, if that makes sense. And this is what they have right now, a little bit above average in the uh, north central United States by Michigan, Wisconsin, UP of Michigan. And with a big storm coming in California, we're experiencing uh, above average precip right here you can see continuing continuing but we start seeing these two uh precip above average precip blobs of, on the map starting to combine together and for the next couple of 
periods of days, we see California start to trying out, but we really see the eastern U.S. starting to pick up in a green and above average precip. Now, the reason for this is fairly simple. We have two air masses, one that's probably going to be cooler across the northwest, like I already forecasted, and like uh, I'm pretty sure that will, will happen, and one that's going to be above average right here in the southeast. And along these uh, these air masses between them two, the bare clinic zone forms, and that's where the storms ride along, and they produce precip along that, and you can see that's why it will be above average precip right in this area where these two air masses meet. If we look at the temperatures right now, we could see that this is what I'm talking about. We start off with cold temperatures, which is happening right now. We go through a brief warm up, but the temperatures in the southeast stay the same or above average and the north and in the north the cold air doesn't make its, you know, way way far to the south, but it stalls out around um the central part of the country around Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas area. And the, the, the warm air mass, the cold air mass, the storms ride right through here. And they bring above average precip right here and right here. So this would be falling most likely as snow. And here would be most likely as storms and possibly severe weather. So this is my final forecast. And uh, um, why I'll, I'll explain a little bit why I think so. So I think a snowiest, a snowiest area in the whole United States will be around the central part of the country, including states like North Central Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, especially the UP. The reason for this is I think that, again, the, the, there will be a lot of storms riding up right along here, and that will produce quite a bit of snow in the cooler areas. And right here, I have slightly above average due to the fact um, I also have uncertainty because if some of the storms ride a little bit further to the south, when the, when the warm air mass moves to the south, we could see these. Um, we could see the cold air move further south, the storms further south, and we could see the snow setting up across these further southern states. But I think most of the storms will produce snow across these areas. But I, you know, I still said slightly above average for this area because. Um, it's an uncertainty about whether, in fact, a couple of storms could just form and produce quite a bit of snow, which will put it above average. And here, I think, again, above average as well, due to the fact that a lot of these storms will be riding along this path, similar to Winter Storm Harper, I'm fairly sure, will be there will be several storms at least like that, bringing cold and snowy conditions with upstate, uh, upstate New England, interior New England. But these coastal areas, again, whether a storm comes a little bit further to the south, brings snow to the southeast, it will bring snow to the northeast as well. But the uncertainty with that is um, where the storm, you know, where the storm tracks. We could be seeing, uh, we could be seeing a little bit northern track, more snow for interior. We could be seeing a coastal track, more snow for the coastal areas. And I, I'm favoring right now more of a, um, snowy scenario for interior northeast rather than coastal, but there's still definitely a possibility of several big snowstorms nor'easters across the coastal areas like you know Boston and New York City and Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. So right here in Florida, I just have wet due to the fact I think we have been seeing already a wet pattern and it doesn't seem like many things will change. Average right around these areas, this was a really hard area to predict because it was kind of in between, maybe a little bit cooler towards the north, a little bit warmer to the south but in general average maybe a little bit wetter than average due to the storms possibly making their way in here um nothing in particular i would say for these areas california nevada and parts of arizona i would say above average was precip and snow for the first or maybe first couple of days of february but then seems to dry out so below average snowfall overall and here was the even tougher call the west i said slightly above average and I just said that because we we saw a similar pattern. You know, we I predicted a b below average for the, the winter across the west here, but they have been seeing above average. And I think that storms will continue coming in towards the northwest, producing quite a bit of rain and snow, just maybe a little bit above um, average in terms of temps. So I just said slightly, but this could definitely be above average, too much above, above average for the northwest. Um, especially since that where the cold air will be sitting for the first couple of weeks of February. And that's where quite a bit of rain and precip will be falling. And in Alaska, I didn't really um, uh, dissect that too much in this video, but I think it will be fairly above average, at least for the um, beginning of February and towards the further um, west you go up towards you know Russia. I think that's where uh, it will be colder. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.